So he was great. And, and I think that, that we, we need to talk about that issue. We need to talk about how are we going to give professors the tools they need so that they can better provide um, an inclusive classroom environment for all students, regardless of their ability or disability. And that's a hard conversation to have. That's why I had another section of the film where it was animated, where I took real, we, we, we were literally like, how do we get this voice into the film? Because nobody will come on camera and talk to us. And I said, well, let's do an anonymous questionnaire to professors. They submit their, their quotes to us, and then we'll vo hire voiceover actors and animate, you know, do animation. And that's what we did. So we had a little segment where it was real quotes from professors about students asking too many questions, um, you know, sucking the oxygen out of the room, um, all, I don't, feeling like I don't have the training. And we were able to voice those things along with, um, you know, these quotes, but, but not outing those professors because I really, I don't want to shame them into the shadows. I want to invite them into the conversation. I want to hear their concerns. I want to validate their concerns. And then I want to address their concerns. Spencer. I ain't mm. got no problem shaming him. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all put baby in the corner. <laughs> oh my God. Um, no, I'm with you, Eric. Uh, I mean, it's tough. Like you said, they're not trained educators. Their, their specialty is in chemistry, computer science, animation. It's not on how to work with like students. And in K through 12, overwhelmed. They're already social workers, teachers, nurses, case managers, they're too much. So then to add on disabilities is, is too much and they're underpaid. But when you get these professors, you know, they, you're right. They got responsibilities and everyone's paying, but there are some services. There are ways to maybe talk to these kids and affirm or validate or to work on some things. But you know, they're busy. I get it. And they're doing research. I get it. Uh, and I would add that at my universities I've been at, there's been a lot of people that have wanted education and that have sought me out. And I've done trainings in math departments. I've done trainings in chemistry departments and English departments. And, you know, they always ask you, what do we do when the kids like wigging out or stimming or the kids rocking in the chair and the other kids are looking, you know, what do we do? And he, and like, he freaks out and he starts hitting his head. And so there were some things that we went over what to talk about, how to ask the student things before and after, how to maybe ask them to help them regulate themselves and to allow the stimming. Well, when's the appropriate time to intervene, making sure you're not shaming the student in front of class. There's, you got your kids. We always talk about the kids that raise their hand too much and talks too damn much. Always. But also what about that neurodivergent autistic kid that never talks? What about that one that's always scared to join group? That one that never makes any eye contact. That's just in the corner doodling. And, you know, they don't get much attention either. And I'm like, you making sure you connect them with that kid? Um, yeah. You know, as, I, mean, I, I, I would say to, to me, there's so much low hanging fruit that it, what I find really frustrating is that um, some really simple solutions aren't being implemented. I mean, how hard is it to put on the syllabus in bright, bold letters at the top? If you have a disability, you're welcome here. Come and please come and tell me, or let me know what your accommodations are, or here's the number to the disability services office. Make sure you get your accommodations because I want you to succeed in my class. Like just an, something inviting to just say, like, I'm open. And, and if you have needs, I want to meet them. Like, how hard is that? It's literally, you type it, it doesn't take your time. It doesn't take your resources. And it just opens the door in a way, you know, how hard is it if a kid is raising their hand every five seconds to say, listen, I know you got a ton of questions. I want to answer them all. How about I'll stay after class and you bring all your questions to me then uh, just so that we're not interrupting the flow of the, the lecture, but I'm happy to you know, come to my office hours. I mean, how hard is it to just have a simple solution to a simple problem? Why does it have to be a behavioral problem? Why does it have to be like, barging into their disabilities to say he's interrupting the fall. I mean, I just, it, to me, it's like there's, there's some real low hanging fruit here that is not being plucked. And that's what drives me crazy. 100. Um, yeah, 100. It's so many easy things that folks don't even fathom or try to uh, integrate into the classroom. 
Uh, you know, I've got professors that want to fail students because of attendance. Kids too anxious to get out of his room. Straight A's on everything. Too anxious to get out of his room, we're going to fail. Oh, come on now. You got me and the doctor signing letters that there's a legit disability. Well, I've got a policy. Disability said they're cool with it. Um, kid can't write. Right, and his hand cramping up and locking up, right? And the penmanship's terrible, but they're like, hey, you got to write this, 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 these things, these formulas out. My kid's like, hey, I'll tell you the whole damn thing, but we need to do it verbally. Nope, needs to be written. I mean, I get, you know, I, their thing is, hey, if I do it for one, I got to do it for a ton of them. Nah, man, because kids got written documentation. Right. So that, but also there, uh, there was a professor that um, posted a TikTok that we reposted that said to that argument, He's like, I thought about that. And I thought, yeah, I don't care if you come to my class as long as you pass my test. So attendance is optional. I don't care how, if, if you need time and a half, I don't care how long it takes you to complete my test. I just want you to know the right answers. So everybody gets time and a half. Like, I don't, like he went through all the accommodate that like the most common three, four accommodations mm -hmm. that people were requesting. And he's like, that sounds reasonable to me. Everybody gets it. So, you know, to the to the argument like, well, if I do it for one, I got to do it for all. Well, maybe do it for all. What's the harm? Like, what are, what are you actually after in your class? What are you actually after? Well, you know, you know, we're babying these kids and this is why China's beating us. I say that as a joke. This is what my fucking it's true. physiology professor told me at community college. If I'm not hard on you and make you miserable, this is what China's going to win. I'm like, bro. I, I can't even fucking spell this thing that you're trying to get me to learn. Um, yeah. I love the guy, but he was a miserable son of a bitch. Uh, and 100% autistic as hell. Autistic as hell. Genius. But some teachers are like, for real, man, they will not do universal design. You're right. Give them time and a half. You got some kids with auditory processing issues. So have your lectures recorded. Well, that's the other thing he said. Yeah. It, how easy is it in this day and age to just record them all and uh, just video them all, have them on a server where everybody can access them afterwards? The how hard thing. is that? Not that hard. Not that hard. Uh, well, you know, it's going to lower attendance. Well, you know, if the kids don't go, they don't go. That's on them. Yeah. If they fail, they fail. Again, what are you after? Are you after that they learn the concepts you're teaching? Then the test will tell you that. Whether they're in your class or not in your class, like, what are you after? They have perfect attendance, but they didn't learn anything. Like that's your goal. Like I don't. That doesn't make sense. Makes to no me. sense. Uh, you know, for the teachers that are awesome that I work with, they want to help and they're showing up, but they're burnt out because now they're advocators too, and so now they're playing this social justice warrior as I am, and then they're trying to change minds, and it's hard. Um. And, you know, it comes back to this thing and, uh, you know, our podcast is, you know, pretty progressive, but just because you help folks, right. Doesn't mean that you're giving less to someone else, right. Everyone's like, comes from this like privileged thing. Well, if I give you more of the pie, there ain't gonna be no pie for me. Like there's plenty of pie. We're all going to be fat and happy. It's America. We're all diabetic, you know, I'm joking. <laughs> and like I look at these teachers and I'm like, you can do this. You're not going to harm the other students. Matter of fact, most of the students don't even want to go to disability services because they're shame and guilty. And they think that they don't need it when actually they do need it. No one's taking advantage of these services because they're taking advantage of it, right? They all need these services. And so I do my best to make sure that the teachers are being inviting, that they're advocating and they're making sure that, you know, these more privileged professors Right, because that's what I'm trying to talk about is this privilege where they don't understand you. You might not have been in this situation where you're at right now unless you kid. Right? You might have been on the other side of the fence. Probably not, because you seem like a good dude, but you might have been on the other side. But since now you have this empathy, this lived experience, now you're like, holy shit, I wish I would have known this before. Um, yeah. I think that's the big issue is yeah. a lot of people don't have any lived experience. And so they live in this ignorance. They live in this ignorance and it, it harms other students. Uh, yeah, the harms on the students. The boy, real quick, the boy did did he did what did he do with his animation stuff? Did he did he do anything? Go anywhere? Yeah, so he's he's not animating, but okay. his he's one of his in 
as you saw in the movie, one of the, his endearing passions is Disney. So after college, he was like, I want to work for Disney. And Disney had a uh, uh, internship program. It was actually a yeah. college internship program. He was already a graduate in Orlando. Um, so his mom, who's in Southern California, sisters somewhere in the Midwest, were both like, John, and don't, you're not going to Orlando by yourself. He's like, I'm going to Orlando by myself. So he goes. And um, he gets in the internship program. And Jonathan's outburst problem is against himself. When he feels like he's messed up, he berates himself in public. Well, you can't do that in the middle of Disney. No. <laughs> um, and he did. And he, he sort of berated himself, had an outburst. And so he got dropped from the program. But Jonathan was not going to give up on his dream. So Jonathan got a job at like a gas and slurp somewhere off the freeway, was in like kind of like a halfway house kind of residential motel for a while with some sketchy people. Um, but figuring it out, like waiting until the new cycle of the internship so he could reapply, um, got himself a job, got himself a place to live, navigated that whole situation with a new roommate who was, you know, doing some wacky stuff. Uh hey, thanks for watching this video. Check out the full episode on our channel and anywhere you find podcasts. Also, remember to like and subscribe. Whoop whoop.